Okay, so today we're going to talk a little bit about uh, one of our, I don't know if you'd say our favorite business, but Hank's been wanting to talk about this and tell you guys about uh, one of the businesses that we owned. Uh, I'm Madonna Brown, this is Hank Brown, we're both licensed clinical mental health counselors. Do you want to start out or you just to, me to tell them kind of where we're at and stuff or what do you want to do? Well, when we were down in uh, North Carolina, I had this dream, I guess, uh, of always having a restaurant, you know, and I, I really just loved it and and uh, stuff. And when we got down there, um, there was a building come open, like in the perfect spot, you know, and it was pretty reasonable for that time. And uh, I, I, I really loved it. Uh, uh, we named it Hillbilly's Home Cooking. And everybody called me the Hillbilly or, or and stuff when I was going, you know, working and stuff. And Jessica, she was real little then. Mm -hmm. But she would go around and give people stuff if they needed. Um, and uh, what all else? And uh, oh, Donna did all the cooking. You know, I guess if you look at all the videos, you'll see that Madonna's doing all the work, and I'm having <laughs> fun. <laughs> so when we were in North Carolina, because we moved down there because uh, our oldest son he was having our first grandchild, and we had I had never lived out of state, but anyway, we decided to move down there. Me and Hank and Jessica. Uh, and that's what we did. We moved down there and I was getting my degree in counseling. I finished it up and then I got a job of counseling and we decided to open a restaurant, as Hank says, called Hillbilly's Home Cooking. And we did all the home cooking, the old fashioned recipes that my mom used. We did, uh, we called it tater soup. We didn't call tater it potato soup, soup but it was tater room. soup. And I wrote it on the menu that way because that's what it was called. And we did uh, like roast beef, mashed potatoes, gravy. We did real macaroni and cheese. Uh, we made homemade peanut butter pies. Oh, they were good. Yeah, they're still good when yeah. we make them. Yeah. But we did all kinds of things like that. And Hank would dress in his over, uh, cover, overalls. Yeah. You dress in your overalls. And we had somebody to paint a sign for us and had like a... I don't know. An old some hillbilly. Yeah. Leaned up against a pole or something. He had his gun with him. Yeah, I had his gun with him. It reminds me of something like you'd see on like a Bugs Bunny or something, and it'd be like the, what is it, the Cole Haynes or yeah, the, the McCoys, McCoys and, and Cole yeah, Haynes or whatever. and yeah, the Cole Haynes, I think is what it was. So, but anyway, and then we had a doorbell on there, and it just said, it, for the doorbell, it said, hit. Hit button, then yell. And yell, because because <laughs> it wasn't a button, so yeah. yeah. But anyway, that was a really enjoyable time for us. But we did lunch and supper. So I got up, went to work, and saw clients. And Hank and Jessica would go shopping. And then they would come back and get everything ready, and I would leave that job and go to the restaurant and work. And then of the afternoon around one uh, thirty, I would leave because it would be a break. There wouldn't be that many people come in and I'd go back to work and work as a counselor and then I would go back to the restaurant and work and we closed every night I think around nine o'clock mm -hmm. and uh, that was a job I always wanted and it's a job I never ever want again because there was never a break in the restaurant yeah. it was hard to find people to work and stuff well we found uh, the one guy Daryl Daryl mm -hmm. we found him and he would work, you know, he sometimes would. and stuff, and uh, it got to the point where he was getting tired, and Madonna made him go back take a nap so we could do the <laughs> evening rush, you know. We had a desk chair in the back room, and he would just get so tired, and I'd say, Daryl, get back there and take a nap. He said, I've never had a boss that made me take a nap, and it's like... It's the afternoon. You need to take a nap. You're tired. And I mean, he was working for us for not much money. And uh, I just thought, you need to take a nap. That's just how it was. But then Hank would take, and we would have tea. 
and <laughs> Jessica would come out and help him. She would wait for some. She was homeschooled. She was six at that time, and she was homeschooled. And anyway, she would come out. She'd get all her schoolwork done, and then she'd come out, and she'd help him. Yeah, she make tips now. She and they would that. say... Uh, somebody, at, you know, wants some more tea... I would say, yeah, uh, get that and get them people over there too. And they would run and get the stuff and pour their own tea. You know, they had a ball. Yeah. While he was, uh, while he would tell them, while you're up getting your tea, go on and get them some tea too. Yeah. <laughs> and every, we just, we've always been the kind of people that like to f put everybody in and let everybody enjoy what we're doing. Mm -hmm. always have been that way. When we owned our counseling practice in North Carolina, people would come in and they would bring somebody with them, a family member or a friend, say, well, let me go back here and show you, you know, Miss Madonna's office. Let me show you this. Let me show you the kitchen. And they would come in just like they were part of the family. And I know in counseling, you know, they're not my family and they're not my friend. That's not how it is, but that's just how we are. We just want people to know about us and we want to share our lives with them but we want them to share their lives with mm -hmm. with us and vice versa yeah you gonna tell them about the woman who oh yeah brought yeah. yeah so we uh had our restaurant and it was right beside one of the really wealthy neighborhoods the doctors and the lawyers lived in those neighborhoods and so these people that owned a, a place uh it was an eye center uh, where you'd go and get your eyes tested. It was, it was two brothers that, that owned it. And one of the wives called and said, I would like to get macaroni and cheese. But if you don't mind, can I come to the back door and bring you one of my bowls to put it in? I said, yes. <laughs> so I got it all fixed up and got it all ready. And at a certain time, she was at the door. And I brought her bowl in and I dumped it all in it. And she went off and made everybody think that she had made that macaroni cheese for the dinner that they were having at that office. And I love that kind of stuff. I'm not mad. I'm not upset. I think it's great that I could help her out and make that macaroni and cheese for her. We catered to a lot of doctor's offices because at that time they were allowing us to go around and uh, cook the food and cater like the drug reps and stuff because they had stopped giving out ink pens and stuff like that so we were doing that our first thing at the restaurant the first night we opened was we did a reception for a wedding because mm -hmm. there was yeah. a wedding chapel in front of us so that was really enjoyable but we tell you these things to let you know life happens do everything you can to enjoy it it was hard it was stressful but we still enjoyed it, and we still have those memories together. And we're going to make a and, lot more. And, and, and that's what's important is the memories. It is. I mean, you know, we can pull out pictures and look at them, but if you can keep them in your head and... You know, you know that's a really good point. So what happens if you can't keep the memories in your head of the restaurant? Then is it a good idea, you think, for me to pull out pictures? Or we just don't know? Yeah, no, you'd put it on a disc or something. I just mean, do you think it would be good to see the pictures? Well, yeah, probably, you know, depending on how, you know, if I'm worse or whatever, you know, okay. it might, you know, bring back memories. Right. And I understand there's a lot of this you can research and you can get the answers to. I choose not to because it brings me hope to think, oh, we'll be able to get the pictures out when that time comes. Uh, with our first neurologist we went to in uh, North Carolina gave me a book that one of his patient's wives had written and he had passed away and he told me to read that so I would know what to expect and I made it through about three chapters and all I did was cry and all it did was depress me and I said I am not finishing the end of this story because we don't know what the end of our story is going to be mm -hmm. and I don't and I know me I dwell on the end the end is coming what was the prognosis I think they say uh, I read for Lewy body dementia, most people live five to seven years, okay? Hanks on ten. But I doomed and gloomed and worried and stressed over that for years. And now it's like, well, he's made it ten years, so then do I stress because it's going to be eleven? Oh, my gosh. You know, we don't know what our story's going to be. You guys don't know what your story's going to be. You don't know how long you're going to live. And you don't know how long your spouse is going to live, or your kids, or your parents, or your friends. We don't know. So enjoy your life. 
Yeah, that's a big one. Yeah. Those, ex life. those experiences can help us to make it through. I think back on all the experiences. That's what helps me to make it through on the really difficult days. Is the It just really makes a difference. So, yeah, I encourage all of you guys to make sure that you have an experiences to remember. And hopefully they're good experiences to remember. I've got a really, lot of really bad ones in my life before Hank came along. So that's our story about the restaurant. You've been dying to tell that, hadn't you? Yeah. Good. So we're going to keep on giving more and more stories. And if you want to listen to them, it's fine. If you don't, you can tell us. You know, write it in the comments if you don't. Or if you do. Because we don't know. This is the first time we've ever done anything like this with YouTube. Well, really anything like this. Mm -hmm. So just let us know. Okay? We're still here for you. We'll do whatever we can. Just let us know if you need anything. Okay? All right, talk to you later. Bye-bye.